everything from fighter jets to ICBMs, aircraft carriers and unmanned platforms, stealth planes, special operations and everything in between. Let us dive into the history and achievements of military technology in this episode of Mill Power. When I was younger, I saw this ad for the U.S. Air Force on TV. America's Air Force has a plane so advanced, it dominates everything in the air. Yet on radar, it's as small as a bird. The meanest, baddest bird on the planet. Join the team that keeps us flying. America's Air Force. No one comes close. I want you to understand, my obsession with the Raptor began with that ad, and is the starting point in a timeline that has led me to make an hour plus long video about the fighter. One of the main things the narrator mentions is that Yet on radar, it's as small as a bird. The meanest, baddest bird on the planet. How does a 65,000 pound fighter that is 62 feet long, 44 feet wide, and 17 feet tall appear on radar so small? It appear as a very, very fast bird. Well, let's cover the Raptor's stealth capabilities. Stealth is defined as greatly reduced signature across multiple spectrums, including radar, infrared, and acoustic. The F-22 is the stealthiest aircraft in active service today and is likely the stealthiest manned fighter jet ever built. Though it is impossible to compare the stealthiness of the YF-23 and the F-22, I personally believe that the fully fledged, EMD tested production Raptor may arguably have a smaller radar cross section or RCS. There are many aspects of the stealth fighter's design that allow an incredible degree of low observability. First among them is the extensive use of radar absorbing material. The exact mix of ingredients is highly classified, yet the substance marked a radical improvement over previous stealth coating. While the B-2 Spirit and F-117 Nighthawk require climate controlled hangars to preserve their stealth coatings, the F-22 can be stored outdoors in the elements. Specialized airmen perform maintenance on the aircraft's skin when the need arises. The increased durability while maintaining superior stealth when compared to prior designs allows the Raptor to deploy anywhere in the world without the need of highly specialized facilities. Engineers also utilized planform alignment to enhance radar evasion capabilities. If you look at a picture of the fighter, you'll see that many of the major angles all align in the same direction and degrees. The vertical stabilizers, inlets, wing sweep, and leading edge of the horizontal stabilizers are all the same angle relative to the node. The serrated panels on the weapons bay doors all align with each other. This allows the shape of the fighter to reflect radar waves the ram doesn't absorb. Speaking of shape, the F-22's entire body features continuous curves, featuring practically no flat surfaces. This means as the jet moves, the forward-facing cross-section facing a radar source is nearly always changing, scouting radar in multiple directions. Every individual panel of the Raptor's body is designed for stealth. Everything from the shroud that covers the M61A2 cannon when it's not in use, to the landing gear doors, and even access panels for maintenance are serrated in angles that align to scatter additional radar energy. To prevent them from reflecting radar, weapons are stored internally as are countermeasures such as chaff and flares. Compressor blades up front of fighter's engine are very radar reflective, 
Therefore, the Raptors Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW-100s are buried deep inside the aircraft, and the air intakes are S-shaped, hiding the engine from all angles. A specialized signature assessment system is utilized to determine when a fighter's low observability may require additional maintenance, enhancing survivability. All of these factors result in an extraordinarily small radar cross-section, allowing the F-22 to operate in hostile airspaces featuring highly integrated defense systems. In fact, the radar returns from the pilot's head would outsize that of the fighter they are flying. To combat this issue, Prior stealth aircraft such as the F-117 simply limited the pilot's line of sight. However, as the Raptor is an air superiority fighter, pilots require unhindered visibility for within visual range engagements. Engineers produce an incredible solution, a metallic coating on the canopy that is continuously curved to reflect radar waves. Every aspect of the aircraft was built to defeat system searching forward. The best guess we have as to the true value of the Raptor's stealth is that on a head-on vector at similar altitudes, an F-22 would have an RCS roughly equivalent to that of a steel marble. Along with radar mitigations, the fighter features extensive infrared and visual reduction traits. For visual, the semi-reflective paint utilized on the aircraft helps it blend into the sky. The Jets F-119s feature advanced characteristics for infrared signature reductions. A bypass chamber in the turbine flows cool air outside the combustion chamber and around the nozzles. This generates a shroud of air colder than the exhaust that surrounds it, reducing the size of the heat plume exiting the fighter. For a shocking real-world example of the Raptor's superior low observability in action, in 2013, then Air Force Chief of Staff Mark Welch shared an incredible story at the Air Force Association's Air and Space Conference at Technology Exposition. In March of that year, a U.S. Air Force MQ-1 Predator drone was flying off the coast of Iran. Inbound on the intercept course, a pair of Iranian F-4 Phantoms. As the Phantoms approached, a Raptor was vectored to escort the drone to safety. Lieutenant Colonel Kevin Showtime Sutterfield approached the F-4s and according to General Welsh, quote, flew under their aircraft to check out their weapons load without them knowing that he was there, and then pulled up on their left wing and then called them and said, you really ought to go home. The event demonstrates the Raptor's impeccable stealth capabilities and the level of impunity it allows pilots to operate in. While stealth is often the most talked about ingredient in what makes this jet king of the skies, speed is also critical. The Raptor is powered by a pair of Pratt & Whitney F-119 PW100 afterburning turbofans, and they are modern marvels of engineering. While at mill power, the maximum power setting of a jet engine without the use of afterburner, the turbine produces nearly as much thrust as the F-15 Eagles Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW220 in full afterburner. Each F-119 outputs 35,000 pounds of thrust at full power, making it one of the most powerful fighter engines in the world. The Raptor's total 70,000 pound output is the highest of any fighter currently flying and gives the jet a thrust to weight ratio greater than 1 to 1. Combining these monster power plants with the F-22's refined aerodynamics and sleek frame allows the Raptor incredible speed and acceleration. While the official top speed is classified, the U.S. Air Force states the fighter to be a Mach 2 class aircraft. Though it's probable the fighter can push well into Mach 2.25 or higher, it is likely limited to prevent damage to the radar absorbing material in the skin due to air friction. In fact, at the altitudes and speeds the Raptor operates in, the skin of the fighter could reach over 450 degrees Fahrenheit, as hot as the upper limits of a home oven. To help control airflow and shock waves in the air ducts, the F-22 features a pair of overpressure bypass vents on the back of the fighter near the mid-air refueling receptacle. 
More impressive than top speed is the Raptor Super Cruise capabilities. Having demonstrated a cruise speed of Mach 1.8, the F-22 has the fastest cruising velocity of any fighter in service today. As it does not need burners to go faster than the speed of sound, the Raptor can sustain supersonic speeds for extended periods of time. Other fighters would be required to make extensive use of the fuel-hungry and very visible afterburner to reach the same speeds, yielding them a much shorter rate. Another advantage of this high crew speed is that it removes the enemy's capability to respond and shrinks the window in which hostiles can detect and counter the fighter. While an F-15 or F-16 flying at high subsonic speeds towards a target would be detected by hostile radars at a great distance, the Raptor could make the same approach at nearly twice the speed of sound and likely not be detectable until it opened its bomb bay doors to deliver its ordnance. In an insane demonstration of the Raptor's speed and acceleration, Lockheed Martin's chief test pilot, James J.B. Brown III, described a test out of Edwards Air Force Base where he took an F-22 Raptor from brakes release to 60,000 feet at Mach 1.7 in only 3 minutes and 30 seconds. That's more than double the cruise speed of a 787 and one and a half times the altitude and roughly the amount of time it take to microwave popcorn. Speaking of altitude, the F-119's powerful output allows the fighter to climb and operate at an altitude of 65,000 feet. This not only allows it the high ground advantage over most fighters in service, but also helps with weapons employment. Flying supersonically at high altitude grants weapons greater range due to higher launch speed and reduced air resistance. During testing, an F-22 dropped a 1,000 pound GBU-32 JDAM from 50,000 feet while cruising at Mach 1.5 and hit a moving target 24 miles away. The Raptor's speed and acceleration makes it a very formidable force, allowing it to strike, evade, or respond to any threat on the modern battlefield. A large part of the F-22's overwhelming capabilities comes from the platform's incredible super maneuverability. The jet's power plants command a large presence here. Their powerful total thrust gives the Raptor a thrust to weight ratio of 1.25 at combat weight, allowing the fighter to easily break the sound barrier in vertical flight. With such a high ratio, the engines effectively push the fighter through tight turns and allows the plane to regain momentum quickly. The power plant's thrust vectoring nozzles also add to the mobility equation, pitching up or down plus or minus 20 degrees at a rate of 40 degrees per second. Changing the direction of the thrust allows F-22s to perform maneuvers most other aircraft cannot. Examples include the J-turn, power loop, tail slide, and pedal turn. Powerful engines are only one part of the package. The real magic happens when you add the aircraft's advanced flight control systems. In order to maneuver a 33-ton fighter like this, you need large and powerful control surfaces. Now, please understand that when I say large, I mean large. The fighter's movable control surfaces are larger than the total wing area of an F-16 Fighting Falcon. We'll start with the fighter's pair of enormous horizontal stabilizers the twin tail planes at the back of the aircraft. The entire surface moves and can deflect upwards 30 degrees and downwards 25 degrees at a rate of 60 degrees per second. 
and provide both pitch and roll control. This means the tail can go from the bottom range of their motion to the top in under a second, allowing very rapid movements. The bulk of the Raptor's mobility comes from the marriage of the stabilizers and the thrust vectoring. The rudders are located on the vertical stabilizers and run nearly their entire length. Able to move 30 degrees left or right at 80 degrees per second, the rudders provide horizontal yaw and can be used to decelerate by both deflecting simultaneously. The ailerons and flaperons are next. The flaperons sit on the aft section of the wing closest to the fuselage while the ailerons are positioned next to them. Both are utilized for roll and pitch control along with deceleration. The ailerons can move plus or minus 25 degrees. The flaperons can swing up 35 degrees and downwards 20 degrees. Both control surfaces can move at 70 degrees per second. Finally, the leading edge flaps that run the entirety of the wing's forward section. These extend outward and down, increasing the available wing surface area while also enhancing the aircraft's low speed and high angle of attack handling capabilities. They can move up to 30 degrees per second and can deflect up to 35 degrees in total. In order to manipulate these large surfaces, the F-22 utilizes a powerful hydraulic system that generates up to 4,000 PSI of pressure. This is needed to move flight controls at any airspeed, as the faster the aircraft is flying, the more force is needed to manipulate them as air pressure against the leading edge generates tremendous forces at the high ends of the flight envelope. Everything is controlled by a highly specialized digital fly-by-wire flight control system. Whenever the pilot moves the stick in the cockpit to maneuver, the inputs are filtered through the flight computer, which, in turn, responds to those commands by manipulating the needed flight controls based on multiple factors including weight, center of gravity, airspeed, density, and various other forces across the aircraft while always maintaining control. The flight control computer is so reliable, in the original Dash 1 version of the flight manual, it was stated that, quote, you may fly this aircraft with reckless abandon. If you'd like a more in-depth dive into the Raptor's flight control surfaces, Colonel Randy Laz Gordon, F-22 test pilot and then vice commander of the 412th test wing out of Edwards Air Force Base, did an amazing lecture covering the subject at MIT that is available on YouTube. The link is on screen now and in the description down below. Now, we'll cover a concept that is core to the F-22's design. First look, first shot, first kill. Low observability enhances the first look portion of this. The enemy cannot see the Raptor until it's too late. However, the F-22 must be able to see them with a unique suite of advanced and highly integrated avionics. Lead amongst them is the incredible AN-APG-77 Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA, radar. Featuring nearly 2,000 individual transmit and receive modules, the panel can perform near instantaneous beam steering, shaping, and directing narrow channels of radar energy. Their array's ability to create multiple beams at once allows Raptors to scan 120 degrees of airspace in mere nanoseconds. While its high power and large size grants it an estimated range of 100 to 150 miles, it would take a legacy platform upwards of 15 seconds to scan the same azimuth, yet at 50% the distance. The beam agility also allows the radar to make multiple scans of targets it may be tracking. Modern aircraft sport radar warning receivers, or RWRs, and electronic support measures or ESMs that allow them to detect incoming radar, alerting the pilot 
that the enemy is aware of their presence. To support the Raptor's stealthy design, the AN APG-77 is designed as a low probability of intercept radar, meaning it can track aircraft in its airspace at a reduced risk of triggering RWR or ESM systems. While older radars required a consistent high energy beam to illuminate a target, the Raptor's array emits low energy pulses across a wide range of frequencies. Combining this with agile beam movement, Shaping and rapid scanning allows the pilot to stealthily track multiple targets simultaneously and employ weapons against them. Another piece of avionics hardware that helps the Raptor maintain its stealth is the ANALR-94 Electronic Warfare System, or EWS. This system combines various sensors, including offensive, defensive measures, RWR, and geolocation to enhance both situational awareness and safety. It can detect incoming radar from extended ranges, allowing the pilot to limit their own radar emissions to remain hidden. On the off chance the fighter is detected and fired upon, the ANAAR-56 Missile Launch Detector, or MLD, would come into play. Each system consists of multiple sensors that feature infrared cameras and laser warning systems that can ascertain an inbound missile or the infrared flash of a launch. With that information, a pilot can begin to evade, deploy countermeasures, or go on the offensive to eliminate the threat. As we continue this journey, you've likely begun to notice how each system designed into the platform melds together to make this plane into the king. If I'm a Raptor pilot, and you're an enemy pilot, so far we've covered you can't see me due to my incredible low observability. While I can outclimb you and cruise at speeds you can only obtain by greatly slashing your range with afterburners, thanks to the F-119. I can see you first, without you knowing, thanks to a sophisticated avionics suite while also outmaneuvering you by utilizing thrust vectoring and massive control surfaces moving in concert. I have first look. Now let's talk about first shot and first kill. Designed as the greatest air superiority fighter in history, the platform is armed to the teeth with various air to air weapons that span from an internally mounted gun that can reach out to 2,000 feet to a long range missile with a range of over 100 miles. Let's start with that gun, the 20mm M61A2 Vulcan Cannon. Embedded in the right wing route and covered by a pop-up door to maintain stealth when it's not in use, it fires 6,000 rounds per minute and carries 480 rounds of semi-armor piercing, high explosive, incendiary ammo that can shred any aircraft. For targets beyond the gun's range, you have access to several air-to-air -air missiles. Though the fighter can deploy with every active variant of the Sidewinder and AMRAM, we'll mainly focus on the most modern variants of these weapons. First up is the AIM-9X Sidewinder, one of the most advanced infrared-seeking missiles in the world today. What makes this weapon highly capable is a combination of its thrust vectoring nozzle and high off-bore sight capability. High off bore sight means the weapon can track targets up to 90 degrees off the aircraft's nose, allowing the Raptor to fire at close range hostiles without having to fully point at the target, while the weapon's thrust vectoring lets the missile maneuver rapidly, pulling upwards of 60 Gs in pursuit of its prey. Storing a single missile in each of the side weapons bays, AIM 9s are mounted on the LAU 141 hydraulic launcher. These arms are slightly angled outwards to ensure the missiles do not impact the aircraft and feature a flame diverter to prevent damage to the launcher and the bay as the weapon comes off the rail. Meanwhile, for beyond visual range engagements, there's the AIM-120D AMRAM. Able to reach out and touch somebody, AMRAMs are a vital tool in the Raptor's kit. With a range likely in excess of 100 miles, these missiles can be utilized for area denial or intercepting inbound hostile aircraft. 
Amram's pair spectacularly with the Raptor's A and APG-77, as the array is capable of guiding the missile to targets stealthily prior to the weapon's own internal radar locking onto target during its terminal phase. Like the Sidewinder, these two are attached to launching arms, yet these are located in the large central weapon station. 6. LAU-142 AMRAM Vertical Eject Launchers, or AVL, are located in the main weapons bay and use hydraulics to launch the missiles out of the bay and into the air at 25 feet per second prior to the weapon's motor igniting. While the AMRAM is a highly capable system, the weapon is currently outranged by those of potential adversaries such as China's PL-15 and Russia's R-77M, both with ranges in excess of 120 miles. Though a potential near-peer adversary utilizing such weapons would not be able to utilize them against the Raptor or Lightning II at those ranges, they would be more than sufficient against legacy fighters, bombers, and support aircraft such as AWACS and tankers. The US is currently working to rectify this, not only by upgrading the AIM-120 to a new D3 variant with better range and guidance, but also by designing a new, longer-range missile for the near future in Raytheon's long-range engagement weapon and Lockheed Martin's AIM-260 Joint Advanced Tactical Missile, or JATAM. The JATAM is said to have comparable dimensions to the AMRAM, allowing it to be stored internally aboard stealth aircraft such as the F-22 and F-35, yet have ranges sufficient enough to counter the PL-15 and R-77M. There is a separate school of thought with low observable fighters that dictates a stealth fighter should focus less on extremely long-range missiles and more on carrying more modern, compact, medium-range ordnance. For example, instead of a Raptor deploying with six JATAM, it would instead fly with a dozen of Lockheed Martin's CUDA or Raytheon's Peregrine missiles. Both the CUDA and Peregrine are still in the conceptual development stages. Yet, they take advantage of miniaturized components and new high-powered grain propellants to shrink weapons down to only 6 feet long, half the length of an AMRAM, while having a potential range in excess of 50 miles and possessing maneuverability possibly superior to an AIM-120. So, you have built the greatest air dominance fighter the world has ever known. It's fast, possesses advanced integrated avionics, can see aircraft in its airspace out beyond the horizon, and can engage them all while operating stealthily. The geopolitical nuclear standoff known as the Cold War has ended. Your rival has collapsed, and therefore, so has the military budget. Your fighter's program may be on the chopping block. How do you sell this platform to a Congress that may believe a pure air-to-air -air fighter is a wasteful expenditure? Simple. You add bombs to it. The F-22's air-to-ground capabilities are limited due to minimal weapon space space, restricting the number and size of ordnance the platform can deploy. However, the aircraft's stealth, altitude, and super cruise capabilities more than make up for these shortcomings. In order to carry air to ground weaponry, four AVLs must be removed and replaced with bomb racks. The first air to ground munition to be integrated was the GBU 32 Joint Direct Attack Munition, or JDAM. The GBU 32 is a 10 foot long, 1,000 pound bomb that features an added GPS guidance tail kit. The F 22 can carry two of these along with a pair of AMRAMs and a couple of Sidewinders. In 2007, the US Air Force began testing on a new weapon that would expand the fighter's air-to-ground capacity, the GBU-39 Small Diameter Bomb, or SDB. What makes the SDB unique is its size, range, accuracy, and payload. At just under 6 feet long and weighing 285 pounds, 
the GBU-39 is a compact design, allowing aircraft to deploy with more SDBs than older air-to-surface weaponry. The bomb features two diamond-folded wings that deploy when dropped, granting it a range in excess of 45 miles. GPS and inertial navigation system guidance grants the platform exceptional accuracy, able to strike within three feet of its intended target. The weapon's glide capabilities enable strikes against both mobile and stationary targets. A 36-pound high-explosive penetrating warhead can punch through nearly six feet of reinforced concrete, while other detonating options include surface and airburst. The small diameter bomb's dimensions and explosive yield allows the weapon to be used in areas where collateral damage is a concern and allows the fighter to strike more targets. The weapon's size allows an F-22 greater flexibility as the fighter can carry eight GBU-39 SDBs along with two AMRAMs and two Sidewinders. In 2020, the newest variant of the SDB came online, the Stormbreaker. Designated the GBU-53-B, Stormbreaker features GPS, INS guidance, data link, infrared, radar, and laser seeking. While currently only fielded by the F-15E Strike Eagle, the program aims to fit the new SDB to multiple aircraft, including the F-16, F-A-18, F-35, B-1B, B-2, B-52, A-10, MQ-9, AC-130, and of course, F-22A Raptor.